Okay, let's see what's happening on this phone. All right, it seems like we are live on Facebook. There we go. Okay, cool. Leroy Barnes, how's it, my brother? Hey. Slava, I'm well and you, sir. Good, 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 yeah. good, good, good. Happy to be Healthy there. and well, healthy and well. Let me just put this on silent here. Check your I phone. I have a colleague that always for me has said that too blessed to be stressed. I like that, okay? Too blessed to be stressed. Blessed by the best. Blessed by the best. Blessed by the best, huh? Yeah, no, I love it. I see you very lately. This is not the third time. I see you for a few years and then I see you. Yeah, so I want to have you in two years. Yeah, it was good, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed. All the time, my brother, all the time. Huh? And uh, the, the other thing is, I think, do what you say, and see my car for buy you, maybe is it a, a bit of good luck charm, so I can uh, the lotto try. Maybe you can can zap, can zap my last of our man, the funny hour. Yeah. Well, you always, as I like love, oh, yeah, uh, scopies, my men to say, I just love, you so love, you know, I just love you. Ja, maar mensen hebben al zoveel jaren gezegd, Leroy, dat je hier los hebt, maar net, en dan, na, dat je nu je zegt, maar Leroy. Maar het is ons praat, once a year, catch up met die cryptocurrencies, which you should share, ons gaan maar jam van Engels en Afrikaans, waar je een beetje share van cryptocurrencies, ik weet, een beetje bij zak gemaakt, ga je, en dan moet je zeggen, waar is die geld? Waar is die geld? Slava, some things cannot be disclosed, en dit mens zal een lees doen. Nee, moet niet. Posting this thing, it's going to be on YouTube. Vijf jaar, tien jaar, we gaan mensen die club checken en dan zullen jij het alle geld gemaakt kom. Waar ze voor al sars, alles laatst dag, alle wogen betaald worden. En sars, en sars beginnen ook claim down op die op die cryptocurrencies en die goed te zo. Je moet ons bekijken, explain. So welcome, Leroy Barnes, guys. Today we got a special guest, Leroy Barnes, Leroy Barnes, a good friend of mine. AKA um, back in the days his DJ name was DJ Skippies, but but anyway let's let's we we'll leave that for another day. Ik is nog ik is nog ik is nog steeds Skippies, net niet net niet een DJ niet. Net niet een DJ niet. Is het? Ja, maar nog steeds Skippies ja. So he DJ niet nog no one on weekends. To Slava, to be honest, uh, uh, no. The answer is no. I, I I think last year or so I did a few mixes, but just for myself. Um, But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm not. I'm not DJing as much as I used to. In fact, uh, we used to throw parties <laughs> back in those days. So yeah, and yeah. And when and and when I went through your profile, I see after the party you went to go study, and you didn't tell us. Oh, because <laughs> hey. we thought yeah. everyone just partying. Kati, some guys are studying after these parties. Weet, wat is Slava is een andere story daar joh, het was al lang gesukkel, lang gesukkel, ek het het amper nie gemaakt nie, dat perseverance en through the grace, verstaan jy, het ek het gemaakt joh. Clinton Hedley says DJ double click. Exactly Clay, exactly Clay, DJ, it was DJ double click, that was the name. Yeah, I'm co-owner of Beyond Streams, I didn't even know that, I thought Beyond Streams is just from Leicester. Okay, that's oh, yeah, close. yeah, yeah. So we'll, we we can get into that. Yeah. So beyond streams, it's myself, it's Lester, and my sister Jade, um, that that started it about uh, uh, just over a year ago. Um, so yeah, but uh, you know, Lester, Lester is the anchor, bra. You know, some of us we're just working behind the scenes, uh, making sure that that things work. Um, it's which is good when you've got a team and everyone sort of plays to their strengths. Um, but yeah, that's us uh, beyond streams. Okay, awesome, man. So thanks, Leroy. So guys, this is the Leroy Slava show where we have conversations with entrepreneurs that inspire and experts to admire. And people think I came without Clayton. Clayton actually came up with that line, um, Leroy. Um, no. Entrepreneurs no. to inspire and experts to admire. So let me give him some credit there. You know, um, Clayton is probably one of the most creative guys I've ever had the opportunity to know and work with. Uh, if it's not his artwork, although, okay, let me not man brand me. But uh, it's, 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 it
So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as we go through the interview, if you have any questions for Leroy, pop it in the comment section. You can see it, I can see it, and then we'll take some questions at the end. So Leroy is a dynamic and accomplished senior product manager and digital transformation professional. He loves building products that customers love and solving problems with digital technologies. He recently completed a postgraduate diploma in digital business with Wits Business School, with distinction, by the way. You put that in as well, with distinction, um, and, holds <laughs> and holds a Bachelor of Commerce in Information Systems and Accounting. Um, he's an entrepreneur at heart, passionate about cryptocurrencies, which we'll get into. So if you're interested about cryptocurrencies, he's been, he's been doing it for, so I don't know, when it came out, 10 years. Um, but what's that guy's name that created Bitcoin? He, he started it with... with it's a, it's a Toshi Nakamoto. Yeah, Leroy and Satoshi started it together, Bitcoin. Events, love, I <laughs> um, Passion about the community. Happily married with Michelle with two children and is, and is a practicing Jew. That's also interesting, practicing Jew. Okay, so this is a guy who got an interesting guest here today. Okay, Leroy, welcome, uh, welcome, welcome. So uh, I think... Listen, yeah. Thanks for having yeah. me. I just want to say this is an awesome platform that you have. I love what you're doing. Um, and showcasing, uh, you know, guys uh, from your network uh, and the exposure that that brings. Um, and I, as I as I listen to your tagline uh, around uh, uh, inspire and admire, and I get to wonder, how did I make the cut to be here? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's by by inspirational excellence. Kick up now, you twist. Thanks, thanks, Lava. And and I see you're moving a shaker, and, and you were with Absa, and now you've gone on your own, eh? Yeah, at the moment, um, in fact, I've just come back from, from Kenya where I was for six months. I was there with an organization, an insurance company. I was the head of digital, helping them with their digital transformation for about 12 months. Uh, came back uh, in August um, and now basically doing consulting work and also involved in a few other projects. Okay, so maybe tell us about what a project is. A, is a project developer or, or digital product, product manager? Product manager, what you do day-to-day, um, well, -day, what do you do? How do you? Day-to-day, -day, what do you do? So, okay, so, you know, first first and foremost, I guess, as a, as a product manager, what you're trying to do is <clears throat> you've got an idea, the business has an idea, or you've got a product um, if, if it's already been created. And what you, you know, you, you're trying to build some longevity, a sustainable business out of it, right? So, excuse me, so if you've got an idea, you find ways to turn your idea into a tangible product, into a market that you can sell it. Mm -hmm. If you've got an existing product, you have to be conscious of where that product is in its life cycle and how do you continue to edge out growth um, for, that, for that product. So when I was at APSA, as an example, um, I looked, I was head of product for the international banking um, um, in, in the retail and business bank. And my products that I looked at were were payments, uh, or rather spoke to value propositions around payments, savings, and travel. So if you're going on holiday, um, you know, you need Forex. So I would supply you with that Forex. Um, and I had different products, uh, both physical notes and, and a card that you could use on your travels. If you wanted to make a payment, you've got a supplier, you're importing stuff. Um, I've worked on the payments products that facilitated that transaction. And, and, and there's a lot that goes into sort of, you know, product management and product development yeah. <clears throat> because, you know, you need to consider the customer always. What's their journey? How do they, how do they find your, your product? What emotions do they go through as they interact with your business? Um, and at the end of it, how, how, do you, how do you leave them? How do they feel after doing business? Mm. Full of fail? <laughs> and then say like, yeah, can you trust me? Or do they say, oh, that was pleasant. I'll, I'll actually do it again, and and which is good because now they would recommend you know your product, which is which is fantastic. And and I think marketers have known for years and have said for years, you know, there's no uh, stronger form of 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 validation than uh, uh, word of mouth referrals, mm -hmm. right? I think that's probably one of the strongest forms of of, of marketing that you can find for your brand. So a typical day. Uh, getting in the office, you know, look at the numbers. What did the products do the night before? How am I doing, you know, in terms of target? And depending on what those targets are, that might be volume targets, might be revenue targets. Uh, you, well, you know, I might be looking at uh, customer engagement targets. 
so it all just it all just depends <clears throat> um and then because you know products you, you we constantly uh evolving and working on our products which means you you definitely sitting with a product roadmap and mm -hmm. you've got a team that is helping you deliver on that roadmap so you know always helpful and useful to check in on the team what's happening where are they struggling how are we overcoming some of these problems you know some things can on the surface seem very simple but when you dig in you know you, you understand that it's actually quite complex um you know to, to try and solve so what do you do in that instance right um it's a feature that customers have requested or maybe it came from the c-suite that we need to do this and there's some challenges so <clears throat> you know check in with the team there's also stakeholder management uh both in terms of you know line management uh peers um as well as you know other other departments within within the bank at least that i had so i had regulation and compliance legal uh, marketing, uh, you know, we had segmented. So the guys that actually looked after the customer, so, you know, engaging with them and asking them, listen, mm -hmm. how do I get my product? How do I get your customers to take up my product? Um, we looked at the data and we spotting this trend. Can we do an experiment? Can we run a campaign and see what the uptick is? Um, you know, in, 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 in common cause, a lot of products or some products would have a cycle. Um, so when I think of travel, you know, where there was, there were certain times when South Africans would travel, you know, um, especially abroad. So what campaigns do I have lined up? How am I taking advantage of that? Am I going to run some promotions, et cetera? So what mm. are the levers that I need to pull to ensure that there's, that there's growth happening? Um, and that's for existing products. And if there's a new product, how are we progressing along the development of those products uh, so that, you know, we can hit the market release in a future date? Sure. That's interesting. It's interesting. Sounds complicated as well. So someone, so there's a bank, let's say a bank or insurance company comes to you and say, listen, Leroy, we'd like to, as you say, do international travel, let our international travelers access cash easily. And right. then you'd have to build a product around that. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So, 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 so and basically that's just well. And market as well. On the and technical side well. and, and on the marketing side of it. Technical side. And I think, uh, uh, Slava, you know, part of my, my training as it were. So I've always been passionate about technology. I love computers. Um, some would say I was a bit of a nerd, which is fine. Um, so, you know, I've always been intrigued by technology and computers. And when I started working, I, 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 you know, I saw the potential and the opportunity of using technology to solve certain business problems. And, and it might not always be a, a product that's on a shelf that you're going to sell or something like that, but it could be using technology internally in your in your business to make things a lot more efficient. You know, mm -hmm. instead of sending ten thousand emails, you know, use yeah. a tool, um, something very simple like Mail Merge, which I discovered yeah. uh, many years ago, that you know would automatically just send all the emails to everyone in your in your address book um, and and personalized. You know, you can personalize it. Yeah. Um, What's that called? Um, mail? mail? Mail merge. No, but no, they're better tools. They're better tools than mail merge. Mail, mail, no, I'm mail, just mail thinking, merge. I'll, as we're going through, and maybe there's a couple of notes that these guys can take while you're going through some of these things. And so, guys, make notes. Right. Some of them, it could help you in your business, it could help you yeah. and, um, be more efficient. Yeah. So, I, I would say mail merge is, is, is a very low tech. And, I, and when I used mail merge, this was, you know, 2010 maybe even, you know, round about, let's just say round about yeah. 2010, right? Um, but since then, you know, there's been a proliferation of, of really, really good apps and tools and technologies that have come up that can really assist in, in sort of driving that forward. Now, uh, thanks. In corporate, obviously, and you were doing it for the big companies, for APSA, for, you said your insurance companies. Um, why did you decide to go on your own? What, why did you decide that? How did you make that decision? How did you go for, um, from the, I don't know, maybe let's, let's, uh, maybe the comfort of corporate into going into the your own. The discomfort of, of being at all. So, so of first being of all, your own, your own yeah. medical aid and, and, and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so, uh, EPSA was going through a, a restructure um, around 20, 2019. Um, I looked at, you know, sort of what was happening. I also reassessed what I wanted to do with, with my life going forward. Um, and <clears throat> I, I sort of took that opportunity to say, look, you know, um, I'm thinking about broadening my horizons. Uh, primarily, I was looking for work outside of SA, um, or rather to work with organizations outside of SA. 
uh, and build some global or international experience. Uh, and yeah, and at the same time, <clears throat> I uh, saw this course, the digital digital business course that was being offered at WITS, really, really interested in it. I think it's probably one of the first courses that I've found that I've, that spoke to me, you know, mm -hmm. um, in terms of the topics that they were covering in terms of my career and, and where I'm going. And so I decided I was going to do that um, and take a sabbatical as it were. And, and and pursue my studies and and during that period while i was studying i, I got this opportunity to work for the kenyan organization uh, apa insurance um the first six months i was remote you know it was deep in the heart of COVID, so i was working remotely year from home um, and as soon as things started opening up i, I went uh, to kenya and worked with the guys on the ground which was a really great experience <clears throat> so okay. Now that I'm now that I'm done with that, it's about exploring the the, the other opportunities that are that are out there, um, specifically around you know product management and and the digital digital business. Okay, cool. You find that you're working harder. You're working harder in corporate or working harder now that you're on your own. Um, I think being on your own takes a tremendous amount of discipline. You need a tremendous amount of discipline and consistency. Look, I think. Uh, cause this consistency and discipline is uh, a table stakes in anything that you do, right? If you're trying to get a, if you're trying to lose weight and build a, a summer body or whatever the case might be, you have to be disciplined around your diet and you have to be consistent about around working out. Um, when you incorporate, you know, the, the, the movement of the organization, the rhythm of the organization, you know, whether you want to or not, it'll just take you with it, you know, yeah. but if, when you work for yourself, you're the one, you set the tempo, you set the rhythm. You need to push you know you've got the stresses that are coming no one's no one's coming to save you by the way yeah. <laughs> you know so so you so, so you, you're, hey, you're on your own yeah um look it helps having a good support system and um in that respect very very grateful for my wife you know in fact slava when you told me listen i want you on the show i was like mm, slava i don't know and i told <laughs> michelle i was like michelle so, so uh, you won't believe what happened slava wants me on your show she's like yeah do it i was like oh thank you so, michelle yeah, say, yeah say thank you to michelle there I'll tell, I'll tell michelle you say thank you so it's really about you know having a good support system and like i said i've got that with my wife she encourages me you know we push each other she's also an entrepreneur um she's running her own consultancy and so you know there's a lot of energy and a lot of feeding of each other that we do mm -hmm okay oh that's good yeah. and Scopus, i think you said something important you said you you moving from co corporate you, you took a sabbatical which means you probably had savings saved up for a while so that you could take some time i don't know how many months it was a year or a few months to to transition yes. into 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 your own business yeah yeah, I think um, having, having I a nest, a nest on that transitioning from corporate into their own business or into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Because some people find they come in there and they think they're going to make a lot of money quickly. And most of the time it just doesn't happen. So, yeah, Slava, I I'd, I, I, I'd set myself um, some targets uh, in terms of, firstly, you need to know what your run rate is. What I mean by your run rate, so how much money do you really need? Um, to survive on a day to day um, and then make sure that you've got a good buffer that can see you through it. You know, uh, like you say, you, you think, ah, oh, now I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to start this business. Yeah, and... a million months. Exactly right. And it never works out that way uh, or rather very seldom does it work out that way. And at the same time, there's a lot of stress, unforeseen circumstances, things happen and you and you tend to burn out of your cash much faster than than you realize um and that can you know create a lot of stress for you so so yeah part of that support system you know was obviously the the emotional support uh and mental support i guess that i get from my wife but also you know having financial support in terms of uh, some savings that you can that you can rely on to, to see yeah. you through you know because even as an entrepreneur um you know some you'll have some fantastic months and you'll have some terrible months you know business mm -hmm. isn't is, isn't always it doesn't always go up you know it's a it's a like a stock market chart you know it's up and down but as long as the trend is up it's I, I guess that's always a good thing um so and 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 it's just to be conscious of these things i also try and love a very modestly uh I, i'll add just because you know it, it's and it's from the discipline of 
spending less than what you earn. Mm. I think that's, that's quite important because once you get into the habit or it becomes mm. natural for you to spend less than what you earn, it gives you the opportunity or the ability to start saving, right? And if for those who are out there that are listening, and I hope there are youngsters out there, start saving early. I cannot stress this mm. enough. Yeah. I got that advice. I never took it, by the way. <laughs> I'm only learning that now at 36. <laughs> Islama, I'm, learned, I, I, I'm telling you, um, you know, start, start early, right? Um, I remember my brother-in-law, when he started working, I told him, save half of your salary. You're still at home. You don't have any expenses. And I know, I really know that, you know, hearing this advice, uh, as it were, and I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not giving financial advice other than saying saving, which is a good practice anyways. Um, it's, you know, it's very hard, you know, once you get, uh, once you get money, I mean, when I was coming up and I had my job, you know, buy a car, 17 inch rims, subwoofers, you know, um, (laughs) you know, amps and all of that, you you spend a lot of money pumping and there's nothing, trust me, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, you know, you, you, uh, I mean, there's an entire market, you know, for that. Mm -hmm. Do it, do it, do it, right. Do it. But, but I think for me, the, 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 the takeout is, you know, just learn to spend less than what you earn and save as early as possible and as much as possible. Um, mm. Five, ten years from now, um, those the fruits, those fruits, will, those seeds that you plant will bear fruit. Mm. And that's actually good advice, eh? Um, Scopis Leroy Barnes. Um, because I think especially, and, and especially with us colors, eh? we both colors is difficult, eh? We, bit of a competition here and there, whose car, who's this and this and this. So you find yourself doing things or spending more than what you're supposed to, to some, some people just to keep up or be in, especially in, especially in your twenties, as you say, start young. Mm, start young, start young, okay. start, uh, start early and save as, as, save as much as possible. By the way, I gave my, my brothers that same advice. Um, but you know, so, so far no one has taken it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just have to burn yourself. It's difficult taking advice. You just have, you just have to go through yeah. it, feel the pain, and feel then, the pain, yeah. and then, and then um, do it. And so I thanks, think, Slava. Slava. Maybe the the one thing to say is there's one there's one commodity that we cannot replace, mm-hmm. um, and that we cannot buy um, really, and that's time, right? So, so the idea of starting to save early, like in your twenties. You know, um, it's it's good, right? And put the money there, leave it, you know, and let it grow. Um, when you're 40 or 36, you know, you've now lost that runway, that you know, 15 years where you could have yeah. slowly just built up some capital over the years, you know, and now you're there at 40, and you know, so and you can't make up for that lost time. So uh, that's that's why I say just start early with as 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 much as what you can afford and it's also a, a principle uh, that Warren Buffett <laughs> I'm, I'm told um is credited with which is pay yourself first or Robert Kiyosaki yes pay yourself first um and yeah and and, and let the other expenses come in and try and again you know um uh, uh, earn uh, spend less than what you earn Mm, no, that's great advice. Um, and guys, we've got a lot of comments here and some questions. I think it must be because you were the head boy. Normally, we don't get so many people so asking many questions. Huh? Sorry to disappoint you. Sorry, sorry, Slava. You're a local celebrity. Eh? Thank you, sir. Hardly, hardly. Just a correction, man. Not a correction. Uh, I, I wasn't the head boy. Uh, ik was niet goed genoeg voor die man. Wat was je dan? In mij, uh, nee, ik was niet te oud. Nee, mooi bij. Je was aan alle hoe nooit gepakt met die blazer. Ja, dat die, die is, die is mijn oma. Die zit altijd gezegd, haar kinders moeten worden dentig. Dat was die stijl. Dat was die stijl. Ik weet het niet. Dat was die stijl. Nee, nee, ik was niet gezegd, hoor is voor jou. Um, and so on. Yeah, and then the Owens in my year, uh, Wolfsian and Honor Wolfsian was so Ruin, Ruin USD and Enrique Dupria. Yeah, that was. Ah, okay, thanks. I bike it maybe. But it was cool. 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 It was
Um, en ik was ook in de SRC. Um, ah, oké. Okay. Uh, so, maar dat maar 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 was maar wanneer die wanneer die record uh, rechtstijl is, so wanneer kennis ons van Oostrijk wat gaan sê, hy was nog nooit hoofd sê nie. Ja, hoe jy jy mylle gaan hoofd sê nie, en hy skopjes van wat ons sê. Exactly. Ok, skopjes, hy was goeie advice van saving, right? kom ons gaan na die investing toe, nou ek weet, die Engels en Afrikaans, right? maar kom ons gaan na my Afrikaans, ek weet, jy is baie involved in die cryptocurrency space, okay? ek weet, ek bel jou elke jaar, begin van die jaar, en toe sê skopjes, Wat gaan aan die cryptocurrency space? Waar, wat, wat is niet? Wat, wat maak? Is het Ethereum? Is het Bitcoin? Is het wat er aan in? Met is het Cardano? Ja, dat is dat is een hele paar, right? Zo elke paar, begin van die jaar en bij alle gevoel zo paar questions en ik weet niet waar zak gemaakt ook. Um, Slaap dat in? Ik weet niet waar. Ik weet niet waar. Bij een verloor in. Nu toch bij een verloor van allemaal een crypto toch al bij een verloor. Als je bij een gemaakt hebt. Oh, ek het baie verloor. Baie verloor. Weet nie, die wat, die wat saam, I try not to think about it. I try not to think about it. Crypto space, what do you do? Maybe, you're not a financial advisor, maybe a little bit of advice to, for people that are, that want to get involved in that space. I know you, you were building a, a platform once upon a time. How far did you yeah. get with that? So, so let's, yeah, let's start at the, at the, at the let's get the disclaimers out of the way, right? So, let's, let's, not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. Um, if anything, this is educational content. Um, yeah. and, and, do your own homework. Do and, your and, own and research. Do your own research, exactly. Do your own research. Um, this is uh, entertainment and education, right? So take it, take it from where it comes. Um, you know, Slava, crypto is an exciting space. I, I won't lie to you. Um, it, it gives me my highest highs and my, high, and my lowest lows. Um, and, and some of my friends who are close to me um, will know that I've been telling them for a long time about it. Um, they, I mean, you've just attested to it as well. Um, and even some family members who I've spoken to just to, you know, tell them, look, look. And I think, you know, why do I think that this is? And, and part of my journey in crypto. So I started in late 2015, right? So in terms of a timeline, Bitcoin was created in, in 2009. So I wasn't there when it was created. I didn't. I didn't hop into the Bitcoin mining when that was a thing, um, or at least when you could do it from home, right? Because mm-hmm. now you know you need massive infrastructure to 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 actually mine profitably. Um, but in 2015, uh, I overheard some some colleagues talk about doing some arbitrage um, between the domestic and the international uh, Bitcoin market. So so arbitrage is when there's price inefficiency within a within market. So let's say, <clears throat> um, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on topic, I'll use Bitcoin. So you could buy Bitcoin in, let's say the US or an international exchange at the time, I mean, Bitcoin was like 2,800 Rand uh, a coin, right? Um, yeah, I know Slava, I know, I know. <laughs> I, just, I just started in 2015, eh? Uh, okay, yeah. So, so you know, you could you could buy it for like two thousand, let's say two thousand eight hundred rand. You you ship it back to South Africa and sell it on a local market here for uh, you know three thousand two hundred, three thousand five hundred, whatever the, the. So the so there was heavy heavy um, price inconsistency and in, in inefficiencies in the market. Uh, so that that's really how I got how I got exposed to crypto. So I wasn't getting into crypto uh, because I believe that Bitcoin necessarily is the future. Or this is I just saw that oh okay uh, there's this way of moving money around <laughs> you know that uh, and 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 that you could profit on it and and for the most part it was a risk free trade um, you know because the margins were so fat uh, so but in any case I mean but you were trading that you were trading basically. trading yeah so 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 that arbitrage and and that arbitrage opportunity actually still exists for anyone that's that's interested um, you know you could you can still do that I think. Right now, your margins are maybe about five percent on a trade, um, which you know, if you do it regularly, can it can build up. Um, then, in 2016, um, a friend a friend of mine and I we decided to build a, a, a Ethereum mining rig. So we we built, I think, three, and we started we started mining Ethereum. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was touch and go. I mean, Ethereum. I, I can't remember what the price was back then, but it certainly wasn't what it is now. What is it now? 
like three thousand dollars, three and a half thousand dollars, somewhere within that. That was like between three hundred, five hundred ish, up and down. Yeah. I think I, I, to be honest with you, when we mined it, I don't even think it was a hundred dollars. Um, yeah, yeah, it was low. I, I mean, I, I speak under correction, but it was uh, the price was low. So we did that for maybe about two years or so. We started mining other coins as well because you've got the infrastructure. Um, and then got out in, in 20, 2018. I think we sold it somewhere around there. So the one thing about crypto, which you don't necessarily see in other markets, is what they call these crypto winters. It's these severe market pullbacks where mm -hmm. everyone is depressed. The price is 90% yes. less than what you bought it. Um, you know, and, and, and it's, it's enough to depress you. It's enough. I've quit, I've quit the crypto game. I don't know how many times, uh, Slava. Yeah. Uh, you can't be too emotional with crypto, eh? I, I'm, I'm out of the game. Um, and then, you know, there's a resurgence in the market. Um, and, you know, more people are getting involved. So let's, so, so, you know, maybe what I, what I, what I, what I will share is, you know, I, I've, I've looked at this again and I'm like, you know, despite the initial speculation, because, and, and I think to some extent, it's still very much speculative. And I think we, everyone just need to be cognizant of that. So despite the initial, uh, uh, you know, speculative bubble talk and all of that, that, that happened, um, you know, it's quite easy when you're not, when you don't have the conviction to really see things through, you know, and I think that's where, you know, some of the losses come in because you're buying high and you're selling low, you know, which is the complete opposite of what you're supposed to do. But we are human beings, and we run with our by our emotion. And when this Wait, thing is high, buying high and selling low. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's what happens, right? You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to do the opposite. You buy low yes. and sell high, right? Mm. But but human nature, and you see this all the time, especially in crypto. New guys come in. You know, crypto is what the, I'll use some of the language that the guys use in the. It's pumping, right? So mm. like Bitcoin, you know. I think if you look at the last year, you know, Bitcoin is, is probably up or let's say this year alone, it's probably up over a hundred percent, you know? Yeah. So you, you know, you get in when Bitcoin is 50,000 US dollars and, and not so long ago it was there. And uh, yeah. was it 50 or 60? Uh, yeah, 50, it's 50, it's right? Money, yeah. so a lot of guys were climbing in, right? I mean, Ethereum was going to $4,000 or it, it surpassed it, et cetera. So there's mass euphoria and it's, and what makes it worse is it's in the news right mm -hmm. the news everyone is reporting on it you can't go to a bri without mentioning someone yeah. mentioning crypto you know and so, so, it's, so it's in your face right so you're like oh okay so what do i do and so so you take some money and you and you put it in right a month later and i and i think like this is what happened this year like crypto had a heavy run up in, in into may something happened and you know we don't necessarily know all the events whether it was china banning it or maybe it's the regulation etc and then there was a severe pullback, you know, so, so mm. Bitcoin coming off its all time highs, going down to 40 people in doomsday scenarios that it's going to 10. So what, so what happened? You already bought in at, at like 50, right? Yeah. This thing is now at 40 going down and you're like, what am I going to do? You see your money. I mean, you see your yeah. money. In front of your eyes. So what do you, so what do you do? You say, you know what, let me, let me cut my losses. I'm going to sell and I yeah. move on. Right. Yeah. Two months later, Bitcoin is back on the up again. You know what I mean? And then you come back in, right? <laughs> so you back, so you back in again, right? So you keep, so it's it's this cycle. So and I think it's very important. I mean, for, for anyone that's new that's going into the space, be very careful about when 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 it is that 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 you that you buy and, and that you get into these things. Um, so where so my view on crypto is that I definitely see it as as the future, um, as part of building decentralized networks on a blockchain. Um, there's some very interesting developments that are happening there. So when we came up, you know, when the internet came up, we had Web 1.0, which was basically just, you know, very basic text and, and some imagery. Then you had Web 2.0, which was a lot more interactive and actually uh, <clears throat> it became the foundation of how we experience the web right now, you know, very rich in terms of multimedia and engagement, etc. And Web 3.0 is the next evolution of the web, which is where a lot of the guys in terms of uh, blockchain and technologies and platforms that they're building that they're looking at, right? There are also moves around digital currencies. Um, and uh, as recent as two weeks ago, uh, El Salvador um, adopted uh, Bitcoin as, as legal tender in, so in, in the country. So, so, the, so and, and, and so fundamentally, if we look at the crypto space, there's a lot of positive signs. There are a lot of positive signs 
MasterCard and Visa are, are you know, are looking into, and they, they're the biggest payment processors, right, in the world. They're looking into into crypto, um, you know, whether it's through their own tokens or whether it's an existing project or platform that they will launch on, et cetera. The, these things are happening. And, and that's in terms of processing payments and, and movement of money. Personally, I see uh, Bitcoin more as a store of value or more than a, a payment mechanism. Of course, yes, it, 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 you can use it as a payment mechanism. Yeah. I think one of the drawbacks uh, of it being a payment mechanism um is is the the volatility in the price right so you know if, if if i'm thinking about it buying a loaf of bread you know i'm paying 20 rand day in day out unless you know there's obviously strikes that that happen but you know with bitcoin and and you have to measure that in satoshi you know you know yeah, yeah, it's, gonna, it's gonna go up and down it's gonna fluctuate and i think but but there are solutions i mean for example in, in el salvador there are solutions where the government is like, look, it's fine. You can accept Bitcoin and we will immediately, you know, swap you out in US dollars, uh, the equivalent of the transaction. Um, mm -hmm. So so from a foreign exchange risk point of view, there, there are ways to, to, to minimize that. Now, what, where else do I see, you know, crypto, uh, uh, you know, being playing a major role going forward? And I, and I think... For are you talking part, now specifically about Bitcoin, um, Leroy? Is this or is this Ethereum? Is it or is it? So, so, so when I said crypto, I, I generally am referring to the the ecosystem as a whole, unless if if, if I'm you know specifically mentioning a, a coin or an asset, right? So, so something else that's been in the news that's been quite crazy is uh, what they call NFTs, non fungible tokens. Okay, um, and these things have created quite a stir because they've been they're selling for millions, right? Mm -hmm. And people don't understand why this would be, and and basically. Um, in a nutshell, what you have is someone is creating art, digital art, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that art is basically, and the ownership of that artwork, digital artwork, is written into a blockchain, right? And the blockchain, which means that there's a record, like a ledger, you know. So, so when now you we can. Art, what is what would a digital art thing look like? What 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 is uh, that? A digital art, a, a pixel. Um, you know, when I say a pixel, I mean if you think about an avatar. So let's say Clayton decides. Slava, I'm going to take a photo of you and I'm going to create an animation of it, right? A, a still yeah. picture, right? You could then take that. It's, it's, it's a piece of art and it's digital. And then you can go and sell that on, an open, on the open market. And someone can then own that piece of, of digital, uh, that, 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 that image. Now, mm. the question is, but why would you do that? And why would it sell yeah. for millions when I can just copy it, right? The key mm. thing here is, is ownership. And what we're doing is, and think think about it in terms of a, a piece of artwork that sits in a museum, right? A museum is a public space. They, um, everyone can go and see it. Um, the, it the, the, the artwork is with the museum, but the ownership of that artwork still sits, you know, with the original. So the, uh, with the digital art, you know, people can copy it, et cetera, but we can verify ownership on the blockchain. So, and, and, and where we're sitting today, it might not seem like, you know, a big thing, Right, mm -hmm. in terms of owning that, and, and we've seen guys in the NBA sell clips, you know, of maybe uh, Jordan doing a, a dunk or Steph Curry or whatever the case might be, yeah. um, as an NFT. So, someone now owns the copyright. How can we create an NFT? How can we create an NFT? Can we create an NFT? Uh, yes, yes, it, it is possible, but I think we'll, we don't have the time to, to get into that now. But, but, that, but, that, but that is possible, um. Yeah. And, and maybe just to wrap, wrap this up, but where I see this is my kids play games like uh, Roblox and uh, Fortnite, although they don't play Fortnite. But in these games, you actually, you know, it's a virtual world. You're creating virtual world. In that virtual world, you can have art pieces. You know, you could have digital assets that you can bring into it, right? So if they are at their age, you know, doing gaming, right, when they are older, we have to imagine that there will be a blending of the physical and the virtual world. We're talking about augmented reality and virtual reality. So how do these digital art pieces, you know, find a home in there? And when they exist there, what will their value be? And I think, you know, a lot of it is guys taking a punt on it. But what this really is doing, it's, it's moving the needle in terms of how we think about ownership of digital properties going forward. Interesting. 
guys, that's that, that we need to do a whole session on its own. So now for, for people that are listening, obviously, Levi is not a financial. What where do we do you buy now? Do you buy? Do you buy on Luno? Do you which platforms? Um, what quick advice just on cryptos before before we move on? So I won't give advice, but I will share. Um, yeah, share, share, share. Uh, <laughs> that, that's right, share. Right. right. So I my what what I would say and what I what I have found works better <clears throat> is um to just buy regularly. If you if you decide if you decide you're gonna buy, buy regularly. Okay, there are lots of platforms out there that you could that you could use. Um, I'd say that, that you know you can start with Luno, and on Luno you you've got direct access to the market where you could buy Bitcoin, you can buy Ethereum, um, and I think they've got a few other tokens that they've got listed on there as well. There's another exchange, so they're quite. I, I think there are probably three three uh, exchanges uh, in South Africa that I would trust uh, personally. One is uh, Vala, V A L R. Uh, mm -hmm. The other is Luno, and the other is Altcoin Trader. Um, it, you know, some uh, altcoin trade has been, and same as Luna, they've been around for a long time. Um, now, there you've got direct access to the market, right? And you're buying a particular token um, directly. So if you, you, you know, you're taking 100 Rand and you're buying Bitcoin with it. The <coughs> alternative to that, uh, which I, I like, is so there's a platform um, called Easy Equities. Um, where they, you know, where you can buy all sorts of uh, investment uh, instruments such as ETFs, uh, direct stocks uh, as well. And on there, they've got what they call a token. It's called the ECR10 token. What the ECR10 token does, it tracks the movement of the top 10 cryptocurrencies, right? So all you need to do is effectively put in a standard debit order. In, in fact, uh, I'm not saying this is what you should do. This is what, <laughs> this is this is my experience. What I would do and what I have done is, on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, just buy that ECN token on Easy Equities, because it gives you the exposure. The guys behind it, they run. They've got algorithms and technology that run. Um, mm -hmm. If you know Ethereum is the second highest today and and it's the third highest uh, tomorrow, the portfolio automatically rebalances. And if there are new coins that are coming up, like Solano, which has really, really been pumping uh, so far, um, and, and people are, are looking out, you know, have, are holding out great hopes for Solano, as well as Ada, Cardano, uh, those uh, holding those tokens or, or exposure to those tokens automatically will appear as part of, you know, them moving into the top 10, right? Mm -hmm. um, look, the crypto market is heavily skewed towards Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, we can think of those as the gold and silvers of the of the crypto space, and 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 then there are others. So it's, and if something happens with Bitcoin, if there's a, a you know a dramatic drop, you can be rest assured, you know there there'll be blood on the streets. All the other cryptos tend to go yeah. down as well. There might be a few that that buck the trend, and that happens. Uh, but yeah, you know, and and I think with the crypto space, it's highly highly technical, right? You have to do your research. Yeah, um, and so which is why, for you know, I I feel like if you just want the exposure, um, just buying that EC10 token is a good way to just dip your dip your toes into the pool. Yeah. Of course, if you you know your risk appetite is 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 much higher, um, you know, going on an exchange and buying directly is also is is, is really that's you know how people get in. Um, but I would add, do it periodically. If you've got you know a hundred thousand rand or fifty thousand, whatever the amount, and you're like, mm. okay, I'm taking all this money and I'm going to buy all the you know Bitcoin with all of it, 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 there's nothing wrong with it. But the problem is because of the volatility and you don't know where we are in the cycle. Yeah. You know, if this thing drops forty percent tomorrow or the next week, you know, you're going to sit there and you're going to be very sad, right? So <laughs> take your take your take your fifty thousand rand and split it. You know, they call it dollar cost averaging, rand cost averaging, and just averaging. Um, if it goes up, it goes up. If it goes down, it goes down. Either way, you benefit. And and that's no different to how we've been taught how to invest through unit trusts over time anyway. Right? I mean, you've got a unit trust um, uh, or, or, or equivalent product. You just know that there's a debit order going off and the investment professionals are managing your, managing your money. And the price goes up and down, but you're not affected by it because you're just buying on a consistent basis. Yeah.
No thanks, um, Lever. So guys, I think that's technical. I think you covered a lot there. So do your research. Um, I was thinking of instead of, let's say you save a thousand rand a month in rands, right? But instead of saving a thousand, now you're saving a thousand in in Bitcoin or in, right. in what, what was the what was the one you you named the the I mentioned Solana, I mentioned Ethereum, I mentioned yeah. uh, Cardano. Yep. So, but guys, this is not financial advice. Do your research. Go read up on it. Understand it. Do you understand anything you get involved in? But yeah. So so thanks there. So I think. Leroy, we've covered a lot. Let's go through some of the comments or questions before we get to the okay, end. Cool. Let's cool. see. Konov, okay. Flemmer says, creative minds are normally faster than the fingers. Okay. There's a lot of comments, <laughs> not many questions. Okay. What's the great success? Viflo, so Viflo, Viflo. You, you can see the questions on your side, right? Motivation. No, I, I think I think only when you, I think only when you, oh, wait, hold on. Let me see. You see oh. it? No, Excellent advice. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I, missed, I missed the comments altogether. I missed the comments altogether. So let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. I see you. Yeah, Skippy, Skippy, O'Connor, does it? No, Jocelyn. Right. Well, he says, Lennon says, no to self. It's always best to start investing early in small increments rather than invest big increments at a later time. If I only knew. Exactly. My, if almost dog sites loop with scuppy cell. What was I stump? What was I stump? Millie, what was I ever said? What was I ever screwed at the ritual room with? Sprung Millie's. Look, Asa. Look, Asa. Look, Asa. At the Zay Lozas. That's Lozas, that's Lozas, that's Lozas, that's Lozas. But yes, exactly. I think well is spot on. Start early, you know. So, uh, discipline and consistency you know yeah. everyone wants to get rich quick and i think you know if people look at crypto and there are lots of lots of schemes right uh no one in his was the owens van robert shamel at me get to fill billions and so defraud or even the bitcoin scheme and so on yeah so there's lots, of, lots of lots of schemes out there which is again very important to to do your own research um but at the, at the same time you know people want to get rich quick right and and there is no such thing as as, as get rich quick, uh, at least not in the majority of cases, right? Because um, so, yeah, I mean, there are incredible stories of people who, a guy who had a thousand dollars, he bought Bitcoin when it was, you know, twenty dollars. The thing went up ten times. He's like, oh wow, now I've got you know, <clears throat> ten thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars, etc. Those stories exist. I mean, but I, I guarantee you. In the world of crypto, probably there are more stories of people losing money and getting it. Right. Um, you know, so yeah, don't be patient, uh, buy periodically, be disciplined about it, and think long term. And that's where the consistency comes in. Awesome. Um, Leroy, before we close, where do you see opportunities now in the digital space? Maybe just one or two where there's where you see, okay, for maybe young guys or people on your separate to Bitcoin, maybe. Or the crypto space where you say, okay, guys, going to Kenya, working with these big corporates in the digital space for maybe a young guy looking to study or going into the digital IT or whatever space, uh, product development, um, and where maybe one or two where you see a massive opportunity coming up in the next couple of years. Whew. Um, Slava, the way, I, the way I'll answer that question is to say, build your digital capital right what is what is digital capital digital capital is a, is a, a, a it's a number of factors in terms of how you relate with technology how do you relate on on platforms and technology and how do you use that to advance your life okay mm -hmm. um we we're living in a, it might sound strange hearing me say this but we are living in a period of abundance you know the, the, the digital era has brought about a period of abundance um you know, no longer if you were a business, let's say in Reicher Park, are you limited to the Reicher Park business only, right? Um, you could, <clears throat> for example, if you had a bakery and you you had, you know, the best cakes, right? By using social media as an example, you know, you could advertise your services on there. You could integrate. And when I say integrate, I don't mean physically technology, but I mean, you could collaborate with uh, courier companies, right. the guys that are doing these d deliveries, right? So you, you're no longer selling your co-sisters just in, in Reha Park, you know what I mean? You can now sell them 
a bit a bit further and, and farther away mm -hmm. um but that that really depends on your own digital you know sort of um uh, capital and how you and you need to invest in that right another another uh, point i would like to make on abundance is there's a ton of content out there right mm -hmm. ask yourself how are you spending your time in front of your screen right if you're watching youtube are you watching silly tiktok videos which is uh, there's nothing wrong with that i mean you know or are you or are you you know engaging educational content where you're now upskilling yourself right mm -hmm. uh, guys like google have got um free digital marketing course that they allow you it's called fundamentals of digital marketing it's for free um and it will teach you everything that you need to know to set up your business from uh, subscribing onto an online uh, business directory from creating your email uh, newsletter list and the importance of that to exploiting or using social media to to generate awareness you know around your brand mm -hmm. I mean, Slava the, the world is changing so fast right and we don't know what's going to happen in the next five to ten years human beings are notoriously bad at predicting sort of short-term uh, moves right we tend mm -hmm. to overestimate what will happen in the short term yeah and we underestimate what happens in the long term so if you're looking in a 10-year space right chances are you're going to say oh no we'll have flying cars in the next five years but actually we don't have flying cars in the next five years it's probably closer towards 10 years you know, i'm using a silly example but you know the rate of technology is changing and it's changing ever faster i, I mean i'll give you an, an anecdote my mom used to sell bags right and you know, not being uh, 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 traditionally selling it, you know, in the markets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we started creating a digital uh, presence for her through Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle ran that for her. But you'd be surprised where she got most of her sales from. And, and it's through WhatsApp statuses. And I see guys like O'Dalen or Daro Daro, as I used to call him. Yes, yes, you know, yes, yes, he's yes. always advertising his stuff. And I think that's yeah. what that's that's what you need to that's what you need to know. That's what you need to be. And if you, for example, are not interested, so I don't, and my mother always tells me, check WhatsApp status. I've, I don't think I've ever put up a WhatsApp status. I don't really, I forget to go look at WhatsApp statuses. But, you know, if you know about that, that's an opportunity that you exploit, you know. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really about being aware of what's happening um, and digitally because we are no longer constrained by that. And like I say, knowledge and information, it's out there, you know. Um, oh, like, I mean, yeah, I'll give you another example. Think about every there's this thing now that uh, careers that people do right that uh, digital content creators or content creators you know when i was growing up that wasn't a career option but right yeah. now that's that's something that people do you on TikTok. you've got fifty thousand followers advertisers love that because now you become what they call a micro influencer and they can partner with you you know to sort of push and advertise the brand, the brand right so mm -hmm. but if you don't know what TikTok is or how to use it effectively you know, you're going to mm -hmm. miss out on that opportunity. So my advice would be load up on your digital capital. Digital, um, that's good make, make sure that you, you you see what's out there, you know, read, acquire the knowledge and, and keep mm -hmm. moving forward. Because if you're not moving forward, the world is, which means, you you know, you're standing still in actual fact, you're not you're moving back. You're moving back. Yeah. Mm, that's good advice there, guys. So guys, build your digital capital. Social media. Um, I've also got a love hate with social media. Sometimes I've... On it, then I'm off of it for oh, it's just at, at Maxwell's lava at Maxwell. That's, that's, why, I'm, that's why I'm on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are on on Instagram. So I'm a, I'm on I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Yeah, and at least I'm photogenic. Thank you, sir. My actually photos for many, but photos for other people. Oh, okay, all right. Come and say it. True story. As I can photo for myself, upset. And create two likes. As I can photo of an echo my fro opposite and create a hundred likes. So obviously yeah. the likes you see that for me, you first time. Yes, you can still show up warm, warm yourself in the camera. Fat photos from from Michelle. Fat photos from Michelle, exactly. exactly. Okay, but well, guys, good advice, great advice, guys. Build your digital capital, social media, apps, um, yeah, edu educational content. Fun on Amalus echoes of Biki is is why you're nervous, it's a fear for sicker for never good. Mm. The technologies and good so then guys, that is great advice. And some things that you can sell that you are doing locally by taking it online, you can you can go nationally. Eh? Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's about it, it's it's about knowing knowing that what you know if you've got a very good product, 
you know, uh, that, that customers want and that you can, you know, put in other markets. Uh, when I say export, I don't necessarily mean cross-border, but it obviously can include that. Um, you know, going digital is a great way to do that. I mean, I'll give you an example in terms of digital, digital capital. Um, so about last year uh, ago, uh, myself, um, less than my sister Jade, we started uh, Beyond Streams. Um, <clears throat> And really, that's because, you know, we used free tools and stuff, you know, uh, that because we we, we, I, we saw a, a need, you know, um, because, pe you know, people were, were passing on, you know, yeah. we, we strict COVID restrictions. Um, yeah, who, who, how do you convey your condolences? Okay, yes, you can do that via WhatsApp. Mensa can travel, ni family, ni cap, whatever. So, yeah. and I mean, we didn't start, uh, live streaming was there long before, right? But through digital technologies, doing a bit of research, understanding, okay, there's this platform that we can use. So, I mean, you're using StreamYards now, Slava, to, to, to run your podcast, right? Five years ago, maybe more, if you wanted to do this, you would have had to have had heavy equipment, right? Yeah. Probably would have had a stream manager over there um, somewhere in the room where you're sitting. But now you've got a, a, a platform that's in the cloud. You sign up very quickly. You know, you set up your, your assets, you do your things, right? So it, so it does take, you do need to get out of your comfort zone and say, okay, let me look into this. Let me embrace, let me play around. You have to experiment. You have to stay curious. I think that's the one thing that has always sustained me in my career is just being curious, asking, I wonder if there's that or the other, right? Yeah. Um, there must be a way that we could do this. Um, uh, we spoke earlier on about, you know, sending emails. So I'm also involved in the West Rand, um alumni, um, or rather golf committee, you know, and we, we, you know, we've, we've got sponsors, we've got golfers, you know, and that, that list is ever growing. And you can imagine, you know, trying to email them all or whether it's a thank you letter or whether it's something, um, you know, or just some, some sort of content, right? Um, 100 email addresses. Firstly, you don't want to BCC everyone. You want to personalize it. So you want the yeah. email to go out with, hey, Slava, you know, thanks yeah. for coming, et cetera. Um, and maybe even have some dynamic content based on who the audience is, right? Yeah. There are tools that allow you to do this now, you know, and you do it, you set it up and you can run it. And for the customer on the other end who was receiving this, you know, they they feeling, you know, they're a, feeling a polished product, they're feeling special yeah. um, because uh, that's one of the traits of, of, of uh, digital um, environments in any case is what they, what they refer to as hyper personalization, right? Um, mm -hmm. We see banks doing this uh, where they offer you a personalized interest rate based on your behavior, your spending habits, you know, your investments, you know, your balance sheet as it were. So, so uh, all it takes is just, being curious and asking, go to Google. <laughs> Auntie Google knows everything. You say, how do and I do this? You know, how and do I send and a lot of emails at once? At, at personal once, right? emails. <laughs> yeah, because you know, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna save yourself self some time. So the solutions are out there. It's whether you want to take the time and invest to find mm. those those answers. And, mm. and I think that speaks to just building that 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 capability to to embrace technology. It's here. It's yet to stay. It's gonna. It's it's gonna only advance, and we have to. We have to uh, stick to it. Yeah. No thanks, Liva. That's great advice. So, guys, I think on the crypto side, do your research. Look at it. Um, it's interesting, and put some money, little bit of money in there if that is what you want to do. Not financial advice. Build your digital capital. Okay, mm -hmm. that's where the world's going. Guys, and especially now, everyone's working from home. It's, um, it's yeah. we're not meeting like mm -hmm. we used to meet in person, eh? COVID, and I think hopefully it gets back to some sort of normal soon because people need people. It's nice seeing Skippy's on the screen, but it's nice to see him in real life. Yeah, um, Slava, you know, you're saying that you know, I know, I know some guys who were facilitators, right? Um, and that was their bread and butter. Yeah. Um, and for, when COVID hit, everything went digital, everything went virtual. So these facilitators now had to learn how to conduct the training that they used to do, you know, in a physical room with participants sitting yeah. there, how to now do that either on Zoom or on Microsoft Teams, you know? Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, if, you, if, you, if, nev if you've never even switched on a computer, right, that is a huge leap for yeah. you, you know? And if you don't, you know, jump on it and say, okay, I need to learn how to use Microsoft tools. Again, in the, in the spirit of abundance, go to YouTube, type in, uh, what is this thing? Uh, you know, MS Teams tutorial, 
yeah. someone has made a video about it and they'll talk you through it. So, yeah. so again, so which is very, very essential uh, that you build that. The other thing I just wanted to add there um, as, as maybe a thought, you know, as you're trying to wrap up as well, is there's a, there's a Jewish saying, um, pray as if everything depended on God, act as if everything depends on you. Right. Um, I think that speaks to it's critical, you know, be curious, take action, you know, execute. Execution is critical. Don't be afraid to try your ideas. And if they don't, you know, come to fruition, that's fine because you take the learning. Yeah. Um, but constantly, constantly try uh, right. and, 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 and increment on your ideas and pivot. Yeah, that's good advice. And I think you, and I think. Another thing is you're going to be rubbish at it at first, eh? You're going to, your lighting is going to be bad. You're going to be nervous. You're, you're going to be, the first couple of times are not always great when you try these new online things, eh? There's always something, load shedding or yeah. something's going to happen. And, and <laughs> But eventually yeah. you get comfortable and it starts going better and, 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 and you'll improve. So I think, yeah, that, that's good advice. Eh? Learn, be curious yeah. and, and don't, don't, and make mistakes. We've got, yeah. Francis says here, he says, what are your thoughts? I think we got like two minutes left here. We are already in an hour. Time flies okay. here. What are your thoughts on using a cryptocurrency as a form of payment for cross-border business? Yeah. Um, it's there. You can, you can definitely do it. Your challenge that you come up with is with regards to regulations and, and the law. So in South Africa, um, money is considered to be capital and if you're transferring capital uh, offshore without the uh, blessing of the of the south african reserve bank you could land yourself in a bit of uh, uh, trouble and 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 because cryptocurrency is not yet uh, seen as a medium of exchange for cross-border uh, trade um I'm not a legal expert, but something tells me that it's it's bordering probably on 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 the illegal side of of, of doing it. Um, <clears throat> but that's not to say that the mechanisms can't it doesn't exist. I mean, if and, and also the uh, key thing to remember is that uh, the regulation it keeps changing. I mean, our our guys in South Africa right now are, are pushing out a lot of uh, regulations and white papers, both from SARS and also from the Reserve Bank, as they try and wrap their heads around how to create a sustainable ecosystem um, with, you know, in South Africa with regards to crypto. So it, you can do it. Uh, I can send someone you know, Bitcoin now and they might be in Vietnam like my friend Tony um, and vice versa. But you know, before the regulations, you know, it was a bit of a gray area, but I think as the regulations are coming out and becoming more clear, some of these things are being thrown out. And I think there's actually a note that's been put out that transferring your Bitcoin from uh, an exchange uh, offshore also, I, I, essentially out of South Africa is, is considered illegal because it's a, uh, you know, capital flight and, and it hasn't passed through uh, the reserve bank. When you only send it from those three platforms from, from, from Luno, from altcoin, if you want to send international, or are there other ways that you can send it without, cause I think standard bank only does standard bank own Luno or something like that. Eh? I don't know that standard bank owns but, Luno. Um, okay, can you send but, it without? Without the government and the banks picking it up, is that can, can you say that? I'm not even sure if you can say that. But can you? So I think there's a there's a misconception that that you know trading in Bitcoin as an example is is uh, completely um, how can I say um, what's the opposite of transparent? But you know that it's untraceable. It actually is traceable. It's just that it's uh, you, you have to work a bit hard. And there are ways of obfuscating you know the flow of funds, right? Um, <clears throat> but to get back to your question, I think the, the great thing about crypt the crypto space is that it's entirely decentralized. There's no need for a middleman, to be honest, right? You can go onto Luno, you can because it's a marketplace, and you can go buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or what whichever other asset that you want. You can then transfer that uh, Bitcoin, whatever you've purchased, you can transfer it to your own wallet that you hold either on your phone or on your laptop or, or wherever else. And then once it's on that wallet, it's not linked to anyone except you, mm -hmm. right? And from there, you can transfer it wherever you want to, right? You can send it to someone in China or to the US, right? And that will just go, there'll be a record of it on the blockchain that that transaction happened. But, you know, traditional financial institutions won't, won't be part of that conversation because it's, it's genuinely peer-to-peer. -peer. It's just between myself and the, the recipient that I'm se sending this uh, value uh, to, this Bitcoin to.
No, that's good. Okay, Francis, I hope that answers your question. Let me just read Crystal's one quickly. I have to. Um, <laughs> she says, talk to your financial advisors to start saving. It's also free will month. Contact me if you want to chat. <laughs> Contact us <laughs> <Crystal> if you want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for financial advice there. Uh, Michelle says, great session. Um, to Leroy's. Brandon, I think we're going to end with this one. Leroy, what's the chance to collaborate on an app where is it with community safety, yeah, with to community of, safety and, com like and community yeah. like ours? Let me yeah. let me know. Could be fun. Yeah, community safety um, safety app. A community safety app. Uh, I mean, yeah, Brandon, uh, hit me up. Uh, slide into my DMs, as the as as guys say. Um, we can we can talk about it. I think if there's you know generally if there's a problem and we can use technology to solve it, we can do that um app development is not my speciality so i'm not a developer actually you know I've, I've, i don't write code but you know i'm hoping that there are talented developers uh in in Reche park that can take this on as a project maybe there's some guys some matriculants who are interested in tech we can you know we can certainly look look at at, at, at putting something together um with the community in mind and, and their safety and i think that's always the, uh, the key thing for me is what is the problem that you're trying to solve be clear about that and, and really hone in on it and deliver features incrementally as you build out your product because you know traditional way of doing something is like okay i'm gonna dip, i'm gonna build an app right and it's gonna have ten thousand buttons and 50 features and then you build the whole thing it takes you two years and you deliver it and it's a big flop and you've burned a hundred thousand two hundred thousand yeah. right so start small uh, test the idea. Sometimes you can even start the testing an idea without even writing code. In fact, when I was in, in Kenya with the team that I was and the business came and they said, we've got this problem, etc. We use techniques like design thinking, prototyping to really crystallize what we think the problem is the business is trying to solve as well as solicit customer feedback. And you do it in a very low cost manner, right? I mean, you, you haven't hired an army of developers. You haven't purchased infrastructure. It's just a few designs. Um, or maybe a, a makeshift app, you know, with no real integration and you're able to test it and see if there's value in pursuing this further, you know, and you deliver the first button and that's why you have a roadmap because, you know, over time you're going to have to deliver everything, but you want to do it value-based. So you want to deliver the things that would have the highest value first, right? Because that's what customers are going to be paying for or advertisers or whoever, however, whatever your business model in terms of revenue generation is, that's what you want to lock down first and then start rolling out other features um, that you know that are useful to customers that are delightful and keep them engaged yeah that's that's good so yeah i think slide into his dms brandon um, <laughs> <laughs> what i was thinking about is maybe once a quarter or something we have like a business networking thing let's say at Arambe, in the park somewhere where we have a speaker come out like um scuppies leroy to maybe do a 20 minute presentation on some of these every couple of months. We have a different guy coming, maybe uh, uh, whatever. Next week, we're speaking to several Ribi. So um, join in next week. So, ladies and gentlemen, conversations with entrepreneurs that inspire and experts to admire. So, we've got an entrepreneur here and an expert. He gave us great value. Um, like, share this video, share it to your group, share it on your pages um subscribe to the youtube channel it's also going to go on to my youtube the link is there you can subscribe you can go watch it again it'll be on facebook um leroy thanks so much appreciate your time but yeah scopies it's so you know subscribe to my channel and youtube and whatever right so basically, you know, just think about how you now have, are creating content and putting it out there. You know what I mean, right? Which is not something, if you wanted to, to do that before we went digital, right? No, me, you know, Han Iman Kreda, so very SABC, Fastanye, you pitch your idea and this, that, and the other, right? Now you can self publish, yeah. right? You're passionate about the topic. You know, I know you were doing talks in terms of property and motivational speaking. By the way, Slava, Slava great story, great story. I don't mm -hmm. think people, uh, and I can you come as a long path, right? And I don't, and I don't keep uh, by a man, sir, um, for standard of the skin, it's like a listening box with advertiser, but that's great, great inspiration. Um, 
and, and, and how you've been able to now pivot and use digital tech. I mean, that's what you're doing right now. You're using digital technology to continue what you're doing because you can uh, stadiums can uh, fill up the dome with your property talks. So you have yeah. to find another way to do it, right? <laughs> right. So, so, so that, that is not, you know, so it's really, it's really all, it's there. The digital world is here. It's making life easy. And I think, you know, I can talk about this for days, but i um, happy to engage. Thanks for having me. Uh, bye, Danke Almal. All the comments, the, the the questions. It was awesome, awesome engagement, Slava. I hope we can do it again, um, anytime, brother. Um, yeah, crypto, digital, product management. Uh, these are these are my passions. So, let's kind of out it ourselves. Crazy, ever. Thanks, well, be ever there. Um, Semi, Va, where do we get hold of you if you want to follow you? If you want to, if we want to look at your photos with Michelle and 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 and. and by the way, you have a very nice photo. I said, yeah, but this photo can be a very engagement. Is that a photo? You look like a model, bro. Huh? You modeling. You said that's a modeling. I guess it was my side as I said, but maybe I'll look into it. I think after that, uh, maybe there's something there. Maybe there's something there, Slava. Uh, no, that was just a corporate shoot. Yeah. It's got a bit of an echo advantage for you guys. Um, yeah, um, you were talking about the property. We've got a, we've got a, um, an opportunity where we're busy looking at about 22 flats in a school. Um, so we, we're working on the finance, should be financed this week. We need partners, equity partners. So if you are interested in investing in property, affordable, residential, commercial property, slide into my DM, says Leroy says. If you are, you have 100,000, couple of, you have some bucks that you want to invest in property, right? Then send me an inbox and I'll send you the details. We can go out and view the property and then take it from there. So that's from my side. So guys, we've, we've had a break for two weeks. I was just busy. But every Wednesday, um, 10 a.m. Next week, we're having Cyril Ribi. He has a successful logistics company and he's decided to become a politician. So that's going to be interesting. Um, <laughs> so Leroy, all the best. God bless you, Michelle. So I had a training gekregen. I was, I think, I was president of the SRC. So, oh, that's the same year, the whole year. was, 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 so next week we're going to talk about half business. Then we're going to talk about politics in the community. So it's going to be interesting getting his views. Um, so God bless, Leroy. Um, we'll call Thanks, you back Lama. in the next few months. All right. Do some okay. stuff and then come back and maybe we can talk about, I don't know, there's a lot that you covered here. Talk about building your digital capital and how to go about that yeah. in more detail. Okay. Thanks, man. All the best, guys. Thanks, Lava. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Um, don't log off. Let me okay. just end the podcast first. <laughs>